Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Petro Intelligence. My name is Shahid Khan and I am a chemical engineer. Today we will discuss equilibrium concepts in vapor liquid mixtures and we will also discuss bubble point and dew point. Our work as process engineers and operators is based on three principles. Hydraulics, when the velocity of water in a pipe goes up, its pressure goes down. Heat balance, condensing steam gives up latent heat, or sensible heat, to increase the temperature in the feed preheater. Vapor liquid equilibrium, a boiling liquid is at its bubble point, and a condensing vapor is at its dew point. Bubble point. The purpose of this video was to explain what is meant by the terms bubble point and dew point, and how we can use these ideas to improve the operation of the distillation tower. To begin, we will derive the bubble point equation from the basic statement of vapor liquid equilibrium. Y1 equals K1 times X1, where Y1 equals concentration of the first component in the vapor. X1 equals concentration of the first component in the liquid. K1 equals an equilibrium constant. We really should use mole fraction and not concentration in our description of Y and X, but for our work, we will just say that the term concentration refers to the percent of a component that the operator would see in the gas chromatographic GC, results as reported by the lab. The equilibrium constant, assuming the ideal gas law applies, is defined as K1 equals PV1 divided by PT, where PV1 equals vapor pressure of the first component at the temperature we are working at in PSIA, use vapor pressures chart. PT equals total pressure in PSIA, PSIA equals PSIG plus 14.7. If you do not recall the meanings of mole fraction or the ideal gas law, don't worry it is not necessary to recall these in order to understand bubble points or dew points. Substituting equation 2 into equation 1, we obtain Y1 equals PV1X1 divided by PT. Let's assume that we have three components in the vessel shown in picture. Then we could write Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 equals PV1X1 divided by PT plus PV2X2 divided by PT plus PV3X3 divided by PT. But if we add up the concentration of the three components in the vapor phase on the left side of equation, we will get 100%. The fractions on the right side of equation all have the same denominator, that is, the PT, so they can be also added together. 100% equals PV 1x1 plus PV 2x2 plus PV 3x3 divided by PT. Recalling that 100% of anything is the whole thing or, in other words, equals unity or 1, if we cross multiply both sides of this equation by PT, we have PT equals PV 1x1 plus PV 2x2 plus PV 3x3. This is the bubble point equation for a three component system using the bubble point equation. Are we missing the pressure PT in the flash drum shown in picture? Let's calculate this pressure using the bubble point equation and the vapor pressure chart shown in picture. The term partial pressure, meaning part of the total pressure created by each component, is important. The partial pressure of a component divided by the total pressure is the concentration of the component in the vapor phase. For example, the concentration of propane in the vapor leaving the drum shown in picture is 66 PSIA divided by 122 PSIA equals 54%. What is the concentration of pentane in the vapor? The answer is 14 divided by 122 is equal to 11.5%. Adjusting temperature to meet a product specification. Let us assume that a new set of product specifications has just been issued to your shift. The liquid from the flash drum shown in picture has too much propane. The new liquid specification is propane 10%, butane 40%, pentane 50%. The pressure in the drum is still fixed at 122 PSIA. So, it seems as if we will have to run the drum hotter. But how much hotter? Suppose we raise the drum temperature to 160 degrees Fahrenheit and repeat our bubble point calculation. Apparently, our guess of 160 degrees Fahrenheit was wrong. 
If we had guessed the correct temperature, the calculated vessel pressure would have been 122 PSIA, not the 110 PSIA. Try to work this problem yourself by guessing a new flash drum temperature. The answer is 168 degrees Fahrenheit. This seems to be a potentially good application for computer technology. For example, an operator is running a debutanizer and finds that he has too much isobutane in her isopentane bottoms product. He enters the most recent gas chrome result from the lab in the computer, with the corresponding tower pressure and reboiler outlet temperature. Next, he enters the isobutane specification she would like to achieve in the tower's bottoms product. The computer then tells her to raise the reboiler outlet temperature by 17 degrees Fahrenheit to get back on specification quickly. This is a lot better than guessing at the reboiler temperature, lining out the tower, and waiting half the ship for the lab GC result before making your next move. Dew point calculations. We will now derive the dew point equation from the same basic statement of vapor liquid equilibrium, starting within the previous section, y1 equals pv1x1 divided by pt. Now let's multiply both sides of this equation by pt slash pv1. We will get y1 pt divided by pv1 equals x1. Again, let's assume we have three components. Y1 PT divided by PV1 plus Y2 PT divided by PV2 plus Y3 PT divided by PV3 equals X1 plus X2 plus X3. However, if we add up the concentration of the three components in the liquid phase on the right-hand side of equation, we will get 100%, which is unity or equal to 1 as before. Y1 PT divided by PV1 plus Y2 PT divided by PV2 plus Y3 PT divided by PV3 equals 1. Next, we divide both sides of the equation by PT, the vessel pressure. Y1 divided by PV1 plus Y2 divided by PV2 plus Y3 divided by PV3 equals 1 divided by PT. This is the dew point equation for a three-component system. Using the dew point equation. Is science really this easy? Much of the science applied to process engineering is straightforward. In order to show you how to calculate the temperature of the vapor leaving the depropanizer in picture, we will use the dew point equation. This time, we know that the tower top pressure is 175 PSIG, or 190 PSIA. We also know that the composition of the overhead vapor is propane 80%, butane 15%, pentane 5%. It is normal to assume that the vapor leaving the top of a tower is at its dew point. That is, it is at equilibrium with the liquid on the top tray of the tower. Unfortunately, this assumption falls apart if the tower is flooding and liquid is being entrained overhead from the column with the vapor. However, assuming a normal, non-flooded condition, we will guess that the tower top temperature is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Using the vapor pressure curves provided in picture, we would calculate as follows. According to dew point equation, the sum of the quotient of Y divided by PV ought to equal 1 divided by PT. 0.00600 is equal to 1 divided by point. Solving for PT, we